brain fog, severe fatigue, unable to get out of bed. This is the story of a 50-ish year old woman. Searching social media for someone just like her with a savior diagnosis and the hallelujah treatment. Seeing multiple doctors, including the Mayo Clinic and four functional doctors, all diagnosing her with the current popular social meme of SIBO and adrenal fatigue, despite lab tests showing it wasn't. Their recommendations were pharmaceutical and green antibiotics, probiotics, and enzymes in addition to the never-ending adrenal support. Let's rewind this and review. Introducing the doctor who thinks outside the box, Dr. David Peterson. Are you ready for an overview of multiple organ dysfunction syndrome? and the symptoms of cytokine-induced sickness? Let's get started. Her vertical hanging stomach could not produce the necessary acids and enzymes nor hold the food long enough for the diminished chemicals to break down the food with both the upper and lower sphincters wide open. It's no wonder she had such severe reactions to everything she ate. Multiple surgeries, such as having her gallbladder removed, left her with no reserve supply of bile salts which are necessary to break down and emulsify fats. In addition to this, surgeries are often accompanied by the formation of adhesions which stick the organs together or to her abdominal wall. When foods are not chemically broken down in your digestive tract, they begin a fermentation process. That fermentation process produces gas. Why are these foods not digested well? The answer is simple. There's a lack of adequate amounts of digestive chemistry. Because gas expands to fill their containers, it is safe to assume that the volume of gas is equal to the volume of its container. But what happens if that container is a balloon? Let's compare gas pressure. You've seen those stability balls. Their air pressure is 0 0.6 to 0 0.9 PSI. Have you tried sitting on one? 0 0.6 PSI will hold you off the ground. The gas pressure in the intestines for the ileocecal valve to be forced open is between 0 0.25 PSI, that by the way is a puff of air, to 3 PSI. For air pressure to be seen on an x-ray or a CT scan, the pressure must reach 14.7 PSI. That is half the pressure in a car tire. The ileocecal valve is an invagination, not a valve. Those that say it is stuck open or stuck closed are both incorrect. The ileocecal valve is the guard between what is essential to metabolism and that which no longer has a metabolic purpose. The ileocecal valve permits the ingested waste from the intestines to enter the colon and prevents the colon waste from re-entering the intestines. The effects of ileocecal valve incompetency are so far-reaching that a full discussion would require hundreds of pages and videos. Gas blowing the ileocecal valve open allows ingested waste to re-enter the small intestine, causing distension and bloating, contributing to the intestinal overgrowth of bacteria. Splanchnitosis is a term used to describe an abnormal downward displacement of the abdominal organs. Splanchnitosis is more common in women than men. Women experience this frequently with the bladder, uterus, or the colon. Abdominal splanchnitosis may occur with one or more of the organs, including the stomach, liver, spleen, kidneys, and intestines in men and women, or like the woman seen in this video. 
abdominal splanchnitosis may occur without any symptoms. However, the most prominent symptoms seem to be obscure neurotic conditions, often diagnosed as depression for the lack of anything else to call it. These nervous phenomena may include symptoms of every known ailment seemingly confirmed by internet searches. Many symptoms are reduced when lying down. The symptoms include masses which change location in the abdomen, painful localized areas in addition to migratory drowsiness, lack of ambition, insomnia, blues, discouraged feelings, melancholy, desire to be left alone, feeling like weeping, fear of catching this or that disease, bad temper, always looking for a new remedy or a new doctor. Essentially, it's multiple organ dysfunction syndrome with the symptoms of cytokine-induced sickness behavior. Gas behaves like gas, even in the digestive tract, always rising upwards and expanding the intestines within the confines of the abdomen, stretching the smooth muscles of the intestines to their limits. Gas never tires, never fatigues, but the intestinal muscles do. Stretch stimulates the release of serotonin to produce peristaltic contractions. Serotonin reserves are depleted as the gas bubbles disrupt migrating peristalsis resulting in dysfunctional bowel movements, but you may have been told it's a lack of fiber in your diet. Pancreatic senescence contributes to insufficient insulin release and the translocation of enzymes into the bloodstream, resulting in autodigestion of connective tissue throughout the body. Failure to produce stomach acid results in pancreatic enzymes being trapped within the pancreas. The cells that produce the enzymes are protected from the enzymes. The cells that produce insulin are not. They have direct access to the bloodstream. All it takes is a single hydrogen ion to activate all the enzymes trapped within the pancreas. This begins the process of pancreas autodigestion. Food isn't digested properly and blood sugar becomes dysregulated. This autodigestion process plays a role in multiple organ dysfunction. This patient has a vasomotor imbalance known as hepatic portal hypertension with excessively low blood pressure and is very susceptible to pain, speaking frequently of even minor pain throughout her body. Hepatic portal hypertension leads to the development of new veins that bypass the liver. These veins directly connect the portal blood vessels to veins that take blood away from the liver towards the heart into the systemic circulation that is not equipped to deal with the unfiltered blood. Because of this bypass, substances such as bacteria, toxins, and food particles that are normally removed and processed from the blood by the liver can pass into general circulation, causing systemic inflammation. Hemorrhoids, both internal and external, are signs that this is occurring. After seeing this, would you still agree her main problem was SIBO and adrenal fatigue? Or are you thinking that these were low-hanging fruit diagnoses? If the house is flooded, we don't search social media about what color we're going to paint the kitchen. Her house, or in this case, her abdomen, is definitely flooded. The first priority should be to restore normal circulation in the abdomen using a program with lab testing and assessment forms. For more information, use the contact information. This is Dr. David Peterson. I hope you enjoyed this video and please call with any of your questions.